Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm going to review another article. This article is entitled, The Prevalence of Abnormal Hip Findings in Asymptomatic Participants, a Prospective Blinded Study. Meaning that, you know, it's read by radiologists. They don't know, you know, any history on the patients. These are all patients that have absolutely no hip symptoms leg symptoms, back symptoms. So what they found was that 69% of them had a labral tear. So, you know, just think about what that means. It means that, you know, you can't even rely on MRI if you have a real labral tear because you could have had that finding when you were asymptomatic and now you get an MRI for pain. So, Matt, you know, so 70% of people who are asymptomatic, they have labral tears, 24% have cartilage defect. Osseous bumps are basically little outpouchings on the bone. In other words, there's, uh, there's extra growth of bone on, on whether it's the ball part of the hip joint or the socket part. 16% uh, have bone cysts. 13% had labral cysts, and 11% had acetabular bone edema. Then they found out that participants greater than 35 years of age were 13.7 times more likely to have a chondral defect and 16.7 times more likely to have a subchondral cyst. Chondral defect means a cartilage problem, and subchondral cyst means that they have a cyst underneath the cartilage. The first point of this review is that you could be asymptomatic and have all kinds of abnormalities on the MRI. Because you're asymptomatic, it must mean that all these defects don't give pain. These defects don't give pain. So you could say, well then what causes hip pain? Anybody who knows me would know that I keep saying that what tells the brain what's going on in the joint is the nerve endings in the ligaments. In other words, it's the stretching of ligaments that gives pain. The stretching of ligaments that gives pain. These are asymptomatic hip patients who have all this stuff. So this must not be pain producing structures. So could a labral tear give pain? It could, but here's 70% of the people have a hip labral tear and they don't have any pain. So the labrum can't be the main thing that gives pain. What I think happens is if somebody is, falls down and they have awful hip pain, they have a ligament injury, that's what's giving the pain, then they do an MRI and it has a labral tear and everybody's like, oh, it's a labral tear, it's a labral tear. No, it's not what's causing the pain is actually the ligament injury, but ligaments don't show up good on MRI. So ligaments that are strong, the nerve endings in the ligaments, and there's lots of nerve endings in the ligaments, then the most amount of nerve endings are where the ligament attaches to the bone, so that's been proven. So again, what tells the body, the brain, what's going on in my hip joint when I move my hip joint? It's the stretching of the nerve endings in the ligaments. So when somebody has joint instability and the ligaments are stretching excessively, that it stretches the nerve endings and then the nerve endings give pain. So that's kind of the main point. Then a patient showed me their MRI report and on their MRI report, it basically had this on it. In other words, the radiology department at that hospital was letting the patient know that regardless of what this MRI showed, they need to know that the prevalence of MRI findings in patients without low back pain is disc degeneration, 92% have disc degeneration, 83% have dehydrated discs, 56% have disc height loss, 64% have disc bulges, Basically, 32% have disc herniations and annular tears is 38%. These are in asymptomatic patients. They, in other words, the patients don't have any pain and they did a study and this is what it showed. So it must mean the main pain producing structures of low back pain are not these things because if these things caused pain, it would, these patients would have had pain, but they're asymptomatic. 
So you might say, well, then what causes low back pain? What causes low back pain is the same thing that causes hip pain. It's the excessive stretching, the excessive tension on the ligaments that support the lower back. And that's mainly going to be the capsular ligaments that surround the facet joints because that's the fulcrum of motion. When the bones move excessively because there's ligament damage, there's a reflex called the ligamentous muscular reflex. The bones move excessively because of ligament damage. The nerve within the ligaments fire, that connects to a muscle. Then the muscle tenses up to limit the motion because if the bones don't have any limitation of motion, the bone's just going to smash into a nerve, right? It's going to smash into a nerve and cause nerve injury. The joint swells and the muscles tense up to limit the motion so the excessive bone motion doesn't hit a nerve. That's kind of why I wanted to just talk about this and I want to go through again the degenerative process. So just to summarize again, there's lots of abnormal MRI findings in asymptomatic people, which I showed you in the hip and the back. And if you look at the knee, it's going to be the same. So in other words, there's a high percentage of MRIs, like especially in teenagers that show meniscal tears in asymptomatic teenagers, and they don't, they, they have no symptoms. So if a teenager has knee pain, it's got to be some other structure than the meniscus. And the most common structure that causes pain is going to be from injury to the ligaments. That's the main point. Then if we look at the degenerative process, the osteoarthritis of a joint starts out with ligament injury. Then basically you get altered joint mechanics. Then what happens is you get thickening or sclerosis of the bone. Then the joint instability causes excessive pressure on the joint. That excessive pressure causes what? It can cause bone cysts, subchondral cysts, cartilage deterioration. The MRIs are in essence showing that basically the joint instability process has started. So the person's asymptomatic. They're asymptomatic even though they have bone cysts or labral tears because the ligaments are still, do, are still strong enough or not under enough stretch to give pain. And then basically eventually the cartilage tear, the cartilage breaks off. You might get bone on bone. And then uh, eventually the body will overgrow bone, which we call bone spurs to what? To stabilize the joint. Why? Because they have underlying ligament injury or joint instability. And this is basically what it looks like. The, you get cracks in the cartilage that you can see those cracks on MRI. In summary, be careful to make a lot of decisions based on MRI, especially if the decisions are going to lead to surgery because there's lots of abnormal MRI findings that occur in people who have no symptoms. To me, a better approach prior to surgery is, or even steroid injections or whatever, is to seek out the care of a qualified prolotherapist because the prolotherapist would have the skill set to evaluate a person for joint instability. And if joint instability is found, the treatment is prolotherapy. Prolotherapy is an injection technique that causes a thickening, tightening of the ligaments. Specifically, it causes proliferation of the fibroblasts, which are the cells that actually make the ligament. That's basically how it works. And normally, people need anywhere from three to six visits and it's very successful to resolve the pain of joint instability.